Yeah. That's how I feel right now. See the little one up? This is how I feel right now. So close. <laughs> it's so close. Hey, I'm Matt with Schematical, and welcome to another episode of Chaos Pixel. So if you remember, Chaos Pixel was something I was working on probably about a year ago or two, where I was trying to create a generational adversarial neural network to create pixel art. I decided to take another approach to that and train an object detection model to detect how to play and well, first recognize different things inside of a 8-bit, 16-bit NES Sega style pixel environment and see if you can recognize things in that. So for example, right now I'm doing uh, the original NES Zelda and I'm training it to recognize and draw a box around Link. Eventually I plan to train it to do a lot more things like recognize doors and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. Eventually we could probably train a neural net to use that information as a, uh, as a way to format data to feed into a neural net that would actually make decisions. That's all cool for the short version of it, but I actually have some pretty cool long-term stuff of how this could be used to help cure cancer. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll fill you in on all that later on. But in the meantime, I'm about to get into this uh, and actually show you guys how it works on ChaosNet. For those of you guys that don't know, ChaosNet is kind of a hub for my experiments for this channel. If you like this channel, by the way, hit that subscribe button. Maybe check me out at patreon.com slash schematic. I could use all the help I can keeping ChaosNet up and running these experiments. So thank you so much and let's get to it. I don't know what's over there. All right, so let's get to it. What I needed when we first started training was a bunch of data. So picked, like I said, Zelda, one of the most iconic games out there. And I downloaded a video of somebody playing it. And I went ahead and I ran it through FFmpeg to split it. So I started at four seconds in because there was some intro. And I took the first 300 seconds and I split it at two frames per second. So every half second I took a snapshot and split that into a bunch of JPEGs there. From there, I can go ahead and upload it and select a handful of these. Now, a lot of you guys are probably going to remember this initial little scene here. So all I have to do is wait until I find a scene with Link on it, or an image with Link on it to be more specific. Highlight him, next, and just keep walking through and drawing a little box around it. This saves the box as a data set. So you can see down here, there's a bunch with like little links all over the place. And this will actually, when I hit the save button up here, save to server will actually save to ChaosNet. You guys may recognize this quote as one of the most famous quotes in all of video game history. That's the data classification mode. I can actually hit back here. I'm actually using the shortcut keys Q and E. So if you guys are becoming pros here, you guys can see I'm navigating forward and backwards, just Q and the E there, and it shows the box I drew in red there. Once I'm done with saving all that, I'm gonna go ahead and save to server, and we can move on to training. Now, I've got 300 and uh, some images here that I classified, 378 so far that I've classified. So I set it up so you could train in the browser, and I tested it with 50 to 100 images uh, for 250 epochs, and 100 epochs of fine tuning. That just means cycles, basically, in case you're not a TensorFlow person, which I am actually not. I put this fancy little pro progress bar, but training in the browser proved to consume quite a lot of CPUs. So many CPUs that it thinks that sometimes the page is actually frozen. So you can watch the progress from here. You can watch it here, eventually I'm trying to set it up so you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. I unboxed a Raspberry Pi in my second to last live stream, and that seemed to work pretty well when I ran it on there manually. Now, next step is to make it so it runs on there automatically. And if anybody's interested in donating cycles to run stuff on your Raspberry Pi, please hit me up. I'll be setting up a whole network of these, ideally, if this project takes off the way I hope it will. So, you know. Share it, tell your friends. <laughs> so I've shown you how to input them. The next step is to train them, but we're gonna jump over for a quick second and we're gonna look at one of the models I already trained. So once you've trained a model, you can hit the predict and we'll see what happens. I trained this with 50 images and mind you, you should be training them with thousands. So I'm actually pretty happy with the results I got on the 50, though they are definitely overfitted. You can see it lines up with this one laterally, but it doesn't really get it on the Y scale there. 
If we go forward into things like the cave, it's kind of in the boat, but it's not quite there. At least it's consistently off, though, using Link as what it's actually using. Using Link as its actual target there, but it's consistently down in that little corner there. Let's try something else that I don't believe we trained it on. Actually, I did train it on some of the dungeon, maybe. Yeah, so some of these are pretty far off. And when I'm done, I don't think I'm going to make it in time for this video, but I'll let you know when I have a bigger data set to test with how it goes. Because I did say we're going to run that on the Raspberry Pi. Here's another one that seems to get roughly where he is side to side, but not up and down. It could be a coincidence. So I ran it again, the 362 images I classified at 250 epochs for the regular training and another 100 epochs or cycles, whatever you want to call them, of fine tuning. And let's see how these guys do. So I picked my model JSON, my weights, because I trained it locally. I'm hoping to I'm hoping to make sure that's all automated in the future. And let's see how this does. Okay, so it starts off a bit rough, but if I remember correctly, it gets a little better. Yep, there we go. As time goes on. Yeah, that's pretty darn spot on. It's a little high, a little low. Curious what causes that. Ooh, that's a good one. That's pretty decent. Wondering if it's a scaling issue, why it's off like that. That's a real good one. I think they've found they've it's managed to facial recognize Link's face. That's all it can find. That's a decent one. That's way off. That's pretty far off. It's a little closer. All right, let's go down to something we haven't seen before. Uh, I suppose we've seen this one before. Okay, that's that's a little better. Let's see what this one does. That's spot on. All right. So since we've only got 362 so far, let's go ahead. I don't have this functionality written in. Never mind. Okay, so here's the challenge. Here, I've generated, using that same command, the next 300 images. So they're not the same beginning frames as we had before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off screen and I'm going to drag him on and see if it'll predict where he is. And you can see here it's pretty far off, actually, despite being pretty spot on before. Now, for those of you guys familiar with machine learning, that's a lucky guess I'm betting, you're going to know that that's probably because it's overfitted. 363 images, that's significantly overfitted, meaning it's learned how to predict for the images it's already been taught. It's not great at the new ones. I guess I had an uncle that uh, used to learn the Trivial Pursuit cards and memorize them. So he wasn't actually that great at trivia, but he knew kind of how to win the game because of that. So that's what's happening here. So the answer is more images. So I'm going to go ahead over the next couple weeks, upload, hopefully, and tag thousands more images and then run them. And hopefully in the near future, I'll release this. so You guys can actually help me as well on uh, chaos net. More to come about that soon. Still way off. He's not even in that one. I want to talk about the future of this project. What are we currently using it for? Learn to play video games and build new video games. That's kind of cool. But the future of this technology, I want to make this so you guys don't have to have any technical skills to do this. You guys can come here and say, I want to train an object recognition model with a bunch of pictures. And you just pop them in, draw boxes around them, hit train, and boom, you've got something that'll track whatever you want around and draw it on the screen and do all sorts of cool stuff. Now, beyond that, I think it'd be really cool if we could invite our friends to do it. So I'm actually going to release this on ChaosNet so that anybody can contribute by drawing boxes or submitting, you know, images, going out on the web, finding images, and drawing boxes around them. And then we can have all sorts of people creating these cool data models if you want to be a part of this project. I'm going to try and go one step better and actually release it for anybody that's trying to do research or, um, like I said, curing cancer. I probably should have said detecting cancer earlier. I, I, I'm not a cancer curing person. I'm not a doctor. Either way. It'd be really cool if we could get a bunch of radiologists to come in and draw, you know, upload photos or MRIs or however we're detecting that stuff and then draw boxes around them and create a model that could predict cancer earlier based off the MRI and help the radiologists along and speed it up so you could, instead of sending off those photos and waiting hours and hours and hours, you can take a pretty good look at it. It's 95% chance you don't. 
or 99.999% chance you don't, you know, to get those earlier recognitions. And they could crowdsource a bunch of radiologists or even radiologist students, I don't know. Uh, if you're at a research college and you want to try and use this tech, um, hit me up. You know where to find me on the Discord. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be really cool and could lead to some really cool outcomes because you wouldn't have to be very technical to do this. You just need to be able to draw boxes and say hot dog, not hot dog, cancer, not cancer. So that's what I'm going for in the long term. In the short term, we're just going to stick with Zelda and maybe a couple other games. If you like what you saw here today, smash that subscribe button. And uh, if you want to support me and my channel, check it out, uh, patreon.com slash schematical. We can use all the help we can get. Um, excited to see where this goes. There's all sorts. I want to do an audio learning model, all sorts of cool stuff. So check it out. Also, chaosnet.ai. Um, you can get a sign-up key from one of the moderators in the Discord. And we'll get you on there so you can classify your own stuff once I get there. I'll do another video on that, I'm sure. All right. Thanks. Have a great day. It did it. It's done. It saved it. It's close. It's it's just off by a little bit. Ha 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 Ooh. Ooh. It's close. It's off a little bit. Man.